Wait, 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 wait. Run it back. Who are you people? We analyze Power Rangers morphing sequences in this series. You know the drill. We're doing Wild Force and God, look, was Wild Force the best thing in the world? No. Now, did I still have fun with it? No. You were like the worst thing to come out of anything in this series, and I still cannot stand you. Look, I'm, I'm kidding, of course, but Wild Force, not, not in terms of Animus, I, I cannot stand him, but I, <laughs> Wild Force, in terms of its morph specifically, is one of the strangest cases in the franchise, and we're gonna dive into that. Let's get wild. Okay, so let's establish some context. In 2001, Disney buys the Power Rangers franchise from Saban. No, this does not mean that Disney created Wild Force in the same way that many people frame it. This means that Disney oversaw Wild Force while Saban's team finished the show out before Disney shipped everything to New Zealand for Power Rangers Ninja Storm. This is why whenever people say Wild Force was the first Disney season and not Ninja Storm, it's like not entirely truthful, like at all. And I feel like people say that so they can look like this and feel like they corrected someone. Now, I don't know if that could have directly played into how Wild Force played out, and I haven't seen the original source footage, Hyakushu Sentai Gal Ranger, but many people have told me after I finished Wild Force years back that Wild Force is nearly a one-to-one -one from the original Sentai series, beat for beat. Power Rangers' whole thing is creating a fresh new experience with storyline fit for overseas audiences, normally with things playing out differently, but apparently this one is quite the outlier, and honestly, it makes a lot of sense when looking at other aspects of Wild Force. Most of the villains' names were lifted from Gal Ranger with little to no change at all, if at all. As soon as the intro sequence, we get shown a blink and you miss it shot of the Gal Ranger actors' faces inside the Ranger helmets, and it would stay unedited like that for the entire show. It's kind of weird, but given that this was the last season under Saban, I can understand the possible decision to keep things as basic as possible in terms of just using what was already written. Like, they were so done. The finale is literally called the end of the Power Rangers. Like, be so for real, Saban. We still got another, like, 20-something years before that happens. We need to talk about the morph, though. Even with what we just spoke about, it still baffles me what comes out of Wild Force. Take this Ralpho. Do as we do. The Growl Phone serves as the morpher for the Core 5 Rangers. By pressing the main button and shouting Wild Access, the morph is initiated. Wild Access! Wild Access! I do want to say I love whenever they show the power surging through the phone. It's a nice little touch. From there, the phone folds up and we're shown the Ranger Zord briefly appearing over top. The phone then transforms itself. By the way, the phones each visually embody the specific Zord in some fashion. The phone then transforms. None of this makes any sense. The phone then transforms itself into a humanoid figure before the Ranger bursts out wearing the suit and striking a pose reminiscent of their Wild Zord. We then see the Zord roaring in to form the helmet with the eyes glowing to finish the transformation. I mean, wow, like, okay, visually striking. It definitely catches your eye, and it's for sure one of the most out there morphs we've ever had. The Wild Force theme being in the background is also so iconic. Guardians of the Earth, united we roar! Um, on top of that, this is one of the only morphs in Power Rangers history to be lifted 100% entirely from the Japanese version. Power Rangers has always filmed their own morph sequences, being entirely different and creating a strong sense of identity between it and their counterpart in Japan. Okay, in space, we might actually have to talk because you didn't really do much yourself. But then, then again, the show was going to be canceled, so I can let it slide. Actually, wait, wait, wait. What, what was it with Power Rangers seemingly either ending or being sold off that makes the morph sequences suffer a little bit in the Saban era? Here in Wild Force, the morph point blank is a one-to-one -one copy just with the American actors' faces copy-pasted onto the Japanese footage. What's so interesting here, too, is that we have helmet footage at the end of the morph showing our American team. However, they never went back to edit the Japanese team out of the intro so regardless of the morph being incomplete, the Gal Rangers are still shown at the start of every single episode. I'm pretty sure this clip was also shown in the promo for Wild Force that came at the end of Time Force. <laughs> Also, a lot of times, especially later in the series, they kind of just wouldn't show the morph. They would go, oh, we gotta go into the city, and then they would just show up. And then when the rangers would morph on field, it'd look like this. 
like no transition at all they just appeared in one frame this season very much seemed like cost cutting reusing whatever they could when we got our silver ranger merrick the morph was also exactly what you expect lifted entirely from gal ranger his morpher doesn't even turn into a guy though like the, the model just flips around and stops <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm editing this in after the fact. In certain instances, if you look really close, you can see in the morph where they edited out the Japanese actor's hair when they're pacing the new Rangers' <laughs> like faces on it. I'm looking at Max specifically. You can see his hair very clearly changed from like Japanese, just like flowy hair to like a little short afro. It's really funny. All right, now we need to talk about this right here. This is one of the weirdest things and I've always wanted to talk about it. In the end of the Power Rangers part one, the Rangers morph, nothing out of the ordinary, nothing really happened, except that we, for whatever reason, are presented with an entirely new, almost totally redesigned morph sequence that only happens once and never again. Granted, this is the penultimate episode, but it's one of those things where it happens and you just start looking around to see if anyone else caught it because the rangers spin a bunch. Their poses are kind of strange and not entirely reminiscent of their wild zord. And then the helmet is just there. <laughs> it's like they made this sequence first before the show was really being filmed and then decided to scrap it last minute before adding it into an episode somewhere along the line. And I know it sounds like I'm bashing the morph sequence of Wild Force, and I'm really not. It's well put together. Wild Force was a huge thing for me growing up, as I'd never properly watched the series and had only seen it through short clips online. Wild Force is good fun. Watching through it all the way years back was a really big deal, and also really fascinating with the things we know now. With this context, the show's morph is one of the few outliers when it comes to Power Rangers because it was almost fully lifted with little personality of Power Rangers to call its own. It's kind of disappointing with that in mind, especially considering Wild Force was not only the 10th anniversary of the franchise, but also featured big hitting moments like the widely celebrated Forever Red episode. Wild Force was unique in its own ways while also keeping things as basic as possible, which I feel hindered it in certain regards. Nevertheless, it stands as an important part of Power Rangers history for its visuals, its characters, and being the time Power Rangers kinda nearly died again, but not really because Disney bought it and then they, they bought it back and then they gave it away and, and someone bought it and then it died. <laughs> Alicia, Andrew, Austin, Autistic Disney, Brandon, Donnie, Emilia, Grim, Helen, Ian, Junior the Hedgehog, Matthew, Mia T. Toon, 